I'm Kristen Howerton. I blog at Rage Against the Minivan. I'm Paul Martin. I blog at Paulo Sophia. And you're joining us for our weekly conversation where the two of us talk about politics from different perspectives. I am a socialist democrat. And I am a moderate Republican. All right, so let's dig in. This has been an interesting, yeah. we've missed, we actually missed two weeks because I was, um, I was sick last week. So we're, we've got a lot to catch up on. We do, we do. Yeah. So where do we start? Well, I mean, a lot happened in the last 24 hours, though. Yeah. So in the last 24 hours, we've, we've had Wifegate between mm -hmm. Ted Cruz and Donald Trump. So... <laughs> <laughs> Super model gate. Okay, so basically, how did this, how did these shenanigans start? The, the first hit was against Trump's wife, correct? Yeah, apparently one of the super PACs, you know, these are just organizations. It's not Cruz, mm -hmm. it's an anti-Trump group. Okay, um, but are they, they're pro-Cruz group, I the, assume? Um, I don't know if they're pro-Cruz. Actually, okay. I don't think they are. I think this is one of those okay. never Trump groups. They could be, oh, I think it's a never okay. Trump super PAC put out a photo, okay. one of Trump's supermodel wife's nude photos that she did for GQ magazine or something like yeah, that. Yeah, which it's a photo that's been circulating for quite some time right. during this election and she's naked laying on a fur in a private jet. So it's obnoxious. Can you imagine Laura Bush doing <laughs> Right? Or Michelle Obama. Yeah, exactly. No, they're classy. Yes, they are. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's tacky. It's a tacky photo. Um, and it said, what did it say? Just can you imagine this being the first lady? I think so. And okay. I think the intent was for the Utah voters. Yeah. Because um, Cruz needed to win big in Utah, which he did. And okay. they're predominantly Mormon, obviously. And so the idea was to link Trump's Trump with yeah. immorality. Or sure. Well, I mean, the irony is really like, it is a picture right. of his wife. Right. But so anyway. Were they married then? Do you know? I don't think they were. Oh, really? I uh, maybe they were. So. I don't know. I don't know how long Who they knows? Been Yeah. Long enough to have a, a nine-year-old. So a while. Right. Oh, my gosh. I just totally side note, but I was just listening to um, someone was playing sound bites from Trump, and there was a point where he said, someone asked him if he was going to have more children, and he said, I don't know. I might. I mean, I'm not going to raise them. I'll supply the seed. She'll do all the work. Mm -hmm. He's so gross. Anyway. So Trump got upset about his wife being insulted, and then he retaliated directly to Cruz, right? He retaliated, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. as he does. Um, and he blamed Cruz, which, uh -huh. you know, that's, you can't do that. I mean, you can, but it wasn't Cruz. It clearly wasn't Cruz. It was the super PAC. Right. But his um, dig was, you know, basically look out to his wife, Heidi Cruz, yeah. and he said, look out. You know, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna reveal the secret. I don't know what the exact tweet was, but that he's coming after. He's gonna reveal the secret about Cruz's wife. Well, and I think he also did a side by side photo of, yes. of Cruz's wife, a very unflattering photo. Yeah. And you know, some supermodel looking photo of his own wife. Yes. Like a side by side. And she, his wife, looked super angry. Yes. And uh, even Megan Kelly chimed in finally and said, mm -hmm. like, I, th I think her tweet was seriously. Yeah. You know, using that photo, so. So tacky. It's just like, as an as a um, the level of I mean, there's politics have always been dirty. You know, there, there's always True. been, but the level right here is it's it's like those debates. It's a new low. Well, I feel like I agree. Politics have always been dirty, and I think behind closed doors, you know, in back channel, there has been scheming. But to see one of the candidates be that reactionary, and it's him. It's not him gathering a table of people to right. do his bidding. Right. It's him being reactionary. It's right. him popping off the insults, yeah. not his people. Yeah, and even the even the names, you know. I mean, he he will say Lion Ted, and he's he's great yeah. at that's his his name for Ted Cruz is Lion Ted, Lion Ted, yeah. and that the Trump followers don't see just how. This is Immature. like this is third grade. Yeah, it is, it is. absolute third grade. Yeah, and grown adults and hi guys, some of you are voting for him. Don't you see that this is the lowest common denominator? I know. I mean, it's not only is it not presidential. Can you imagine being a principal of a of a local podunk school? Mm -hmm. It just is so low. Forget a school. 
the local supermarket. Mm -hmm. Like this is not what leaders do. It yeah. just isn't. And I know you're going to come back and say, well, all of them are like that. No, they're not. You don't see any of the other candidates creating no. slang derogatory no. names for the other candidates. No. Yeah, Trump does it. And yeah. Anyway. We have not talked since Rubio dropped out. That's right. Yeah. yeah so. Were you surprised? Um, yeah, well, the polling, well, certainly from about a month ago, because mm -hmm. I was saying Rubio, like many, is going to be the nominee. I mean, I know. He's going to be Trump's opponent. Yeah. Uh, the establishment candidate. And. Boy, what a, I mean, this thing has just been, nobody can predict what would have happened, but um, Trump's popular in Florida, and yeah. Rubio got clobbered do you by think, 20 points. Do you think that there was some establishment pressure for Rubio to drop out? I mean, do you think the Republicans behind closed doors were like, enough is enough, we've got to whittle it down? Yeah, you have to think his, you know, his cell phone, or John Kasich's right now, they're, yeah. they're just they're just going off. They're just buzzing off the hook think. with people telling them to drop out. Because um, it's splitting all of the votes against Trump. It is, and uh, so yeah, Rubio got he got absolutely demolished. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how it works at that level. Yeah. But Trump was. I saw his speech that night, um, his victory speech in his um, resort. You know, and it reminds me of. Uh, I don't want to go into the book, but he. I mean, it's basically this resort, forgot what it's called, one of Trump's resorts, mm -hmm. and there are 400 people there, and they're all his friends. Yeah. This is a resort with, you know, people spending $2,000 a night right. in this resort. To want to be so there. it's not even, it's not even like a, a, a traditional. <laughs> not Gen Pop. Yeah. Right. And it's not even like a, tri you know, it's not at the Hyatt, Miami, mm -hmm. where people can come in and the supporters right. are there, but it's like his buddies in yeah. before camera. And, you know, he's boasting about how millions of people are coming into the party and voting yeah. for him. I don't think that's true. Um, he he speaks and he says things. And yeah. Did you read that Politico did a fact check? Did you read about that? Yeah, where they yeah showed uh, all of the. On average, he lies every three minutes, but they're not kind of like exaggerations. Again, Trump supporters are gonna say, "Well, all politicians lie." Right. No, yeah. these are just flat out. Yeah. Bold face, right. untruths. He has no idea what he's talking um, about. Um, but yeah. most people don't care. Or <sighs> it's just so hard not to spend our entire time talking about Trump. And then we've got, you know, his rallies. I mean, since we spoke last too, his rallies have just become massive protest. I mean, he couldn't even hold the rally in Chicago. Right, right. Um, so his his rallies are becoming, you know, a hotbed for sort of racial um, strife. Rumor has it that Ben Carson, I was reading today, has, is instructing him how to look presidential. And so it seems like maybe he's... He's calming down a bit, but when you hear about what happened just this week with respect yeah. to Ted Cruz and Cruz's wife, I, just think I he mean, he doesn't have, himself. he can't stop himself, and I think he taps into that 30% of the people out there, again, some of you are yeah. watching, that you really just don't care. You just, for some yeah. reason, think being loud and looking tough and pointing uh -huh. your fingers and doing this a lot right. and being pissed off at everybody is strength. So right. you're going to vote for the strong guy. Yeah, because that's how you behave in your own personal life. Probably. Yeah. Exactly. Sorry, but I'm not. I mean, the fact is, we were talking about it. The the party split. Yeah. This party is split. And there is a growing chorus of Republican leaders coming out against the the front runner, which I don't think has ever happened. I mean, not in my lifetime have yeah. I seen a party turn on its front runner. Yeah, yeah. And it's happening. Yeah, yeah. And I think that phrase "he's hijacked the party" is yeah. is exactly the feeling I have as a Republican. Mm -hmm. Is a very consistent Republican historically, mm -hmm. I just, I don't get the impression that somebody who helped finance Hillary Clinton's campaign, who's written checks to Nancy Pelosi and Harry supports Reid, Planned Parenthood. supports Planned Parenthood, he's, he's been really a Christian, right, and he's been, uh, he's been on the left, he's been a Democrat his entire life, yeah. and so purely on that level, I feel more like, wait, when you have someone like you know, Jeb Bush or, you know, Marco Rubio or some of these other people that are credentialed Republicans, what is the appeal of somebody who mm -hmm. says, I'm going to be neutral with respect to the Palestinians in yeah. the, and, and again, I'm not making a point on that, yeah. but that's typically not a very Republican no, idea to not. say that you're neutral on Israel. No, it's not. And then, Trump, and then Trump will say, there's no one on the state that's more for Israel than me. And he just says those things right, right after saying that he's right. neutral and his followers swoon yeah. Because he said it. Okay. Believe yeah. me. Totally. Well, I mean, 
Is there going to be a contested convention? Is that coming up? Yeah, I mean, that's the big question. It looks... And so what are the rules around that? I don't... I mean, they're complex, but what I know for sure is that you need 1,237 delegates. Mm -hmm. Try to make this simple. And 1,237 just basically means 50%. You got over right. 50%. Yeah. Um, it does not look like Trump's going to get 1,237 delegates. Um, yeah. Ted Cruz is doing really well. Yeah. Um, in, I forgot which states, but I was reading some polling numbers today. And, you know, it does not look like Trump's going to get 1,237. He's already preparing himself and saying that, well, if I have the most, I should be the nominee. But unfortunately, if that was That's the case, not... yeah, I mean, we have so many presidents that went into conventions mm -hmm. that were not, that did not have a um, popular vote. Yeah. And they did not become president. Right. I mean, some of them were like in fifth place. And so, Purely based on the rules, mm -hmm. just because you have most delegates does not mean you become the nominee. And right. we have a lot, like 160 year history in the U.S. Yeah. of that happening. Man, this is going to be so interesting. It is going to be interesting. And, you know, he was the one to say, and, and again, I think he's inflammatory. I think he uses um, uh, uh, speech to incite mm -hmm. hate and violence. I really do, truly do. Because he was the one to say, if I'm not the nominee, mm -hmm. even if I don't have the 1237, there are going to be riots. I mean, he's inciting violence. And I, yeah. I heard him called on it. And Anderson Cooper was trying to say, wait, but, but you have the capacity to say, no matter what happens, mm -hmm. we need to not Support, resort to violence. Right. And he wouldn't go there. He won't. And he won't even do it, you know, against the people of color that come to his rally. And he won't say... He won't denounce, you know, the guy that was cold cocked in the face or the right. girl who was rough housed out. He yeah. won't denounce it. Yeah. 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 He incites it and then he, you know. Yeah. I think somebody, I think it might have been one of the a blog or something, um, said something like, you know, one day Trump says, I'll pay your legal fees. Mm -hmm. And then the next day he says, um, I want peace. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Like, I know. Yeah, it's, it's just insane. Place. It's it's sad, and it. I think it will. There will be a contested convention, yeah. and there are a lot of of the higher end uh, Republican establishment right now preparing for it. Paul yeah. Ryan does. He's chair of yeah. that convention, and yeah. so. Um, Speaking of Paul Ryan and unrelated to Trump, Paul Ryan came out last week saying an apology for some of the ways he's spoken against the poor. Which I, heard I about thought that. I really was know. admirable. Do you remember what he had said? You know, he had, yes, he had talked about the poor in regard, he had used the terms the makers and the takers. Mm -hmm. And so he had sort of characterized the poor as takers and that a welfare mom is just looking for a handout and looking for a way to take. And he, he said, you know, having spent more time with the poor, I now understand that a mom on welfare is doing what she knows to do and what she can do to help her family. Right. She's desperate. Right. And um, yeah, it, it was moving. I was, yeah. I'm not a fan of his, but I was really impressed. I think, yeah, maybe his um, Anne Rand. <laughs> he grew up on Anne Rand, right? Yeah, Jeez. that's his, yeah, his hero. So maybe he had a, a change of heart. All right, let's talk about the Democrats for a moment. So we- <laughs> Really, do we have to? <laughs> I know, so boring. Um, we've got, you know, a, a new national poll is saying that Sanders and Clinton are in a statistical tie, meaning mm -hmm. that the margin of error between the two is so small mm -hmm. um, that, you know, it, they're, they're tied. I mean, it is still neck and neck. And right. every time I think, oh shoot, it's, you know, it's Clinton for sure. I feel like there's a new poll or. Yeah. Yeah. I know that, um, you know, a lot of Democrats just are, they're, they're chomping at the bit because if she could win, if she can basically disqualify with them, majority of delegates, she now can begin her campaign against yes. Trump or Cruz right. or whomever. Yeah. Um, but they're chomping at the bit because Sanders is just like, he just will not go down. He won't go down. Yeah. No, he's doing really well. Yeah. I mean, it's good. It's a close race. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think the conventional wisdom is that she'll win, mm -hmm. but I mean, you've got to respect the guy that, I mean, I don't remember how, I think he was 60 points behind her or something like that. When he started, when the campaign well, started. Well, didn't he run last election? Did he? I don't remember. I thought he did. I could swear he ran. And was just one of those, like, 6% of the vote guys. Right. Maybe I'm wrong. Someone correct me. But I, I could have sworn he ran, um, maybe it was eight years ago. I don't know. Yeah. I could be wrong. Yeah, there was um, there was a great line that President Obama, when he was in Cuba, said something. I'm, I'm going to botch the um, exactly what it was. But he said, you know, he's talking about America, how mm -hmm. great it is and how 
you have uh, an African American president um, being challenged by formerly two Cuban Americans, mm -hmm. um, a African American, mm -hmm. and trying to, <laughs> who are competing against a woman and a socialist. Yeah, um, a Jewish and socialist. As, 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 as many issues as we have in our country, yeah. which we do uh, with respect to race, and I'm totally on board with you on that, it is pretty amazing that we have a socialist, a woman. We had two um, Cuban Americans, mm -hmm. an African American, yeah, um, and then Trump. And then Trump, who I, in my opinion, is is really just, you know, like muddying up the pool. You know, he's really calling out all the racists out from under their rock. Yeah. So we're looking at the America we're living in right now. You know, and we're all living in it together. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's very interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm hearing a lot of pushback um, in my circles against the Bernie Sanders fans and how rabid they are and how obnoxious they are and how Bernie Sanders fans are saying they would never vote for anything, any, um, for anyone but him. They won't even vote for Hillary. Now it's funny, I keep seeing stuff on Facebook about how dare you say you would not vote for Hillary, mm -hmm. but I've never heard anyone say I would not vote for Hillary. Yeah. So it's one of those things. Well, I think the younger demographic, I think he has over 80% of the millennials. The millennials. Like 80%. 80%. I mean, that is yeah. astounding. Yeah. But there is no way on this planet that any any of those people, I mean, yeah, maybe 1%, are going to vote for Ted Cruz no. or Donald Trump. No. Kasich, maybe he'll, he would cut in or something. else. I don't know who these people are who are saying they wouldn't vote for Hillary if she won the ticket. I would. I yeah. mean, and I'm, I'm a really big... Bernie Sanders fan, yeah. but I'm going to vote for her over Trump. Yeah. A million times Another thing over. I was reading about today, and this isn't surprising, but oh, there's that Super PAC ad with all of Tro Trump's uh, anti women comments. Oh. Did you see that one? Where they just kind of spliced no, together. No, I don't think I saw that one. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, so, it's so disgusting. I actually saw Anderson Cooper played it for him on mm -hmm. Monday night, and, you know, he calls women pigs, and it's, yeah. it's recordings of him. Um, I mean, I've seen similar things, though, right. so I feel this like I've heard This is together in a 30-second yeah. ad with yeah. women saying, really, this is going to be our guy. So Cooper asked Trump about it. Uh -huh. And again, how his uh, supporters don't just see how cheesy and sleazy he is. Yeah. He says, oh, well, you know, um, you know, I'm in show business, and, you know, he doesn't answer the question. He no. just says kind of a little bit of peppers and a little bit of, you know, I was in show business. Yeah. And, and then he said... You know, all those other male candidates say the same thing behind closed doors, which number one, I don't, I don't think that they do, no, because I don't, and nope. I, I, no, I don't. I've got lots of Republican relatives who don't talk like that. Two, it's yeah. one. Even if they did, it's one thing to say them behind closed doors, which is disgusting and wrong. Period. Yeah. But to say them publicly over right. the course of decades. Yeah. And then finally, um, oh, it's just such a mess. Yeah. It's just a mess. It's such a mess. It really is. I just, I, I feel for the Republican Party right now. Yeah. I mean, I just, I'm dying to see how this all plays out and how this all ends. Yeah, we have seven months. I know. Seven it's a months. Long time. Do you know how much stuff's going to happen in seven a months? A lot. Especially if it's Hillary versus Trump. Oh, gosh. My gosh. And, and that puts me in a very, because our, yeah. our original idea was on the left, on the right, right. and here I am. On the right, well, you're having a hard time staying over there if Trump's the leader. Yeah. Which, but you know what? I I actually think it's good because I f I feel like you're still representing your party because yeah. every Republican I know feels how you feel. Yeah. So I I, I think you are still representing yeah the mindset of most Republicans at yeah. this point. Yeah. Going what the hell? Yeah. Exactly what. The hell? <laughs> All right. What do we have coming up this week? I don't know. I think I don't, I don't think we either. have a. I don't, I don't think look. A we primary. have the. There's a primary no. for a couple of weeks, I yeah. think, and so there's a lot of mudslinging now going yeah. on between Cruz and Trump. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of backdoor meetings happening on the Republican mm -hmm. side to talk about this convention, mm -hmm. and we'll see. <laughs> All right, we're going to post this on both of our blogs. Hit us up in the comments um, in both of those, and we would love to take your questions for our next episode as well. Thanks. See you.